uh, oh, yours says crossing his arms. Okay, mine says guiding his hands knowingly. In other words, he did this knowingly. If it just says cross his arms, it's still the same thing. He went like this. But now, Joseph thinks there's a mistake. Dad can't see. Go ahead. Then, then God, for whom my father's Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, and the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys. And in them let my name be carried on, in the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Okay, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. He is blessing the older, the younger, over the older, okay? And the term there is melo hagoyim, the fullness of the Gentiles is what it means. I, I don't know if anybody has that reading in there. Uh, uh, does anybody have anything about the Gentiles in there? Uh, okay, so you, all of you have, mine says a multitude in the midst of the earth. A melo hagoyim. Hagoim, the Gentiles, okay? The fullness of the Gentiles. What he is doing is he is purposely blessing the younger over the older, okay? And Ephraim becomes a picture of the Gentiles in the books of the Bible. In the, uh, it, when it's mentioned here, Ephraim, I shall fill my bow with Ephraim. And anyway, um, Ephraim is dispersed among the nations. The northern tribes of Israel are dispersed. Okay? They go out into the Gentile nations and they bring about a fullness of the Gentiles. They're dispersed all over the earth. Okay? Now, that's not to say that some people from Ephraim are not uh, in the tribes of Israel after the dispersion. Okay? And I don't want to get into that now, but what I'm referring to is the lost ten tribes of Israel that people talk about. There are no lost ten tribes of Israel, and I've mentioned that a few times. But Ephraim becomes a picture of the Gentile salvation coming into the peoples of the world. Hence, Ephraim is not mentioned in Revelation chapter 6 when he mentions all of the tribes of Israel. Even though it's the predominant tribe that tells you that if nothing else, it tells you we're already on the ball that, that uh, the, rev the tribulation period pertains to the Jewish nation. But anybody that can't see that, if they're praetorists and they say, well, gee whiz, Ephraim is a picture of Gentile salvation coming. Uh, where is it? Hosea, I think. Let me see if I can find it. Um, if I can, I'm not going to waste your time on this, but Hosea, um, let me see if I can find this. Uh, Israel was a child of... Uh, 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 well, I got that there. Um, I'm looking for where it mentions Ephraim, and it says, um, uh, Therefore I will be to Ephraim like a moth in the house of Joseph. Uh, there it is. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for something in particular, and until I see it, I'm not going to exactly know what I'm looking for. But um, uh, let's see here. That was 11. Do not rejoice. I found the groups and wait. Um, Israel empties is fine. Yeah, we're going to read, I think we might read 11, but um, it talks about Ephraim all through Hosea, okay, which is a picture of the ten tribes of Israel in the north. It just becomes synonymous with them. When you hear the term Ephraim, it's speaking of the ten tribes of Israel, okay? And But I'm looking for something. Where is it? Um, give me one second. I got one of my chiasms has it in there. Are you leaving? You are leaving. Okay, well, I love you. All right, have fun now. Um, Hosea, is it Hosea that I want? Okay, it was Hosea 1. What? Duh. Okay, and it's one of the chiasms that I found in the Bible. The, the uh, Hosea 1 and 2. Okay, might as well do this now. Um, if you go to Hosea 1.9... If you're in Hosea, if you're not, don't worry about it. But it says, in, uh, God said, call his, uh, call his name Lo Ami, not my people. Lo means no, Ami. Oh, no, we, didn't, we talked about that Saturday night. Ami means my people. Am, people. E, the I, is possession. So Lo Ami, not my people. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Okay? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. Paul, Paul quotes that in the book of Romans. 
He's quoting these particular verses showing how the Gentiles are going to be brought in in a great number by God's reckoning. Um, if anybody can find that particular verse, because mine doesn't reference it. This one doesn't have references in this Bible. I just got it. and um, It's in Romans. If anybody sees that, um, I got Romans 15. It mentions saying, O Gentiles. Um, if you see that particular verse in Romans... Thank you. Okay, so yes, there it is. It says, um, uh, 24, even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, as he also says in Hosea, and Hosea is dealing with Ephraim, I will call them my people who are not my people, and her beloved who is not my beloved, which is why I just read you, okay? And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said, you are not my people, there they shall be called the sons of the living God. So this is Paul talking about Gentiles being brought into the, the covenant people. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Now he goes back to Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth had led us a seed, left us a seed, he would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah. So he's showing this great number of Gentiles that are going to be brought into the covenant people, and yet a remnant of Jewish people will be brought in or saved. Okay? And God has always promised to save a remnant of the Jewish people. They will always be there from every tribe of Israel. There will be a remnant, and Revelation proves that. Okay? Anyway, so in Hosea, we have... Uh, and I don't think I've given you guys a copy of my chiasms, but if I have, you can go and read the one that I did on Hosea. But it all goes back to this account we're reading in Genesis. So let me write this out for you, and it's going to take a minute, but it's so interesting that I just hate to not show you the significance of what he's doing with his hands. Um, if you go back to Hosea 1.9, it says, You are not my people. You are lo ami. You are not my people. Okay, and then it says, I will not be your God, not your God, not your God. Okay, that's in one nine, and then in uh, uh, one ten it says, God, Jezreel, Jezreel, which means God will sow, L, and then Jezreel, okay, God will sow, okay, that's what's mentioned there, and then you go to um, uh, two, three. The next chapter, it's, there's dry land and there's thirst. Okay, dry land. I hope I have enough room to do all this. Dry land and thirst in the land. Okay, T-H-I-R-S-T. -S okay, and then you go to 2-5. The wife departs from her husband. Wife departs. That would be Gomer. Great name for a wife. Yeah. Oh, just Gomer. Oh, my, my, my uncle and aunt in Massachusetts had a goat named Gomer. And so every time I think of... Gomer, you know, um, okay, and then 2-7, wife returns to her husband, okay, wife returns to husband, okay, to husband, H-U-S-B-A-N-D, okay, and then we have 2-9, take away the new wine, take away the new wine in 2-9, take away, A-W-A-Y, the new wine, okay, and then it says in, um, uh, 2, 10 through 12, God punishes Israel. God punishes Israel, okay? Israel, okay? And then if you go to uh, 2, 13, God will punish her, it says. God will, I'm going to have to start writing smaller because I'm running out of room. Punish her, okay? H-E-R. And then it says here... Um, 2.13, but me she forgot, says the Lord. There's the anchor verse right there. But me she forgot, says the Lord. The unfaithfulness of the people of the world. All right, but me she forgot, says the Lord. And then it says in 2.14, God will allure her. So we have a contrast. Instead of punishing her, God will allure her. All right? So this one here and this one here go together. And then we have another one. It says God comforts Israel in verse uh, uh, 2.14. God comforts Israel. All right. Israel. Which is the opposite of punishing her. Okay. And then it says he will give her vineyards in verse, uh, give her vineyards in verse uh, uh, 15. Give vineyards. V-I-N vineyards. Okay. All right. 
and that goes take away the new wine, he'll give her vineyards, bringing back the new wine. And then it says here, the Lord says that you will call me my husband. 2.16, call me my husband. Call me my husband. H-U-S-B-A-N-D, which is the opposite of wife returns to her husband. Okay, and then it says, um, husband betroths the wife. Husband betroths, B-E-T-R-O-T-H-S-W-I-F-E. -E. Okay, and that one goes here. The wife departs. Okay, and then you have um, the grain, the new wine and the oil in 21 and 22. Grain, oh, well, whatever. Grain, new, wi new wine. I'm just trying to write quickly so they don't waste all of your time here. Oil. And then the dry land and the thirst. So you see the contrast. There's abundance, there's dryness. Okay? And then you have Jezreel again in verse 22. Jezreel, God will sow again. Same thing it says right here. Okay? And then you have one more. You are my people. You are my God. You are my people. Whatever. You are my God. See the, the contrasting there? It's a chiasm within the Bible. It's a chiasm of contrasts. Israel in Ephraim, okay? This all goes, and I was just reading this one day, and you know what the funny thing is? After I found it, I couldn't find it again. I, after I'd already typed it and had it on the website for a while, I was looking, and it's funny how the Lord opens something up to you, and then you have to go back and find it in your own notes, because anyway, um, so, in, like I say, I've got dozens of these. I found them all over the Bible. Some of them are parallels, some of them are contrasts, but the Lord is telling us something when he puts these in the Bible. The book of Hosea what is it? Hosea is told to go out and marry an adulterous woman. He's told, you are to take a wife that is going to commit adultery on you. And you're going to have her. And then you're going to have children. And you're going to say, this is not my people. And then the next one, this one is not loved. Lo ruhama. Okay? So you're going to name them. And what he's doing is he's using this person, this poor prophet, marrying a girl that's a harlot as a symbol of the people of Israel and a symbol of God's love for the people of the world. And this is Paul quoting this in the New Testament, applying it to the Gentiles coming in, being grafted in to the Jews. And then he quotes up here that Israel, only a remnant, will be saved because they're unfaithful. Well, we're just as unfaithful. It's not to say that we're any better, but God is demonstrating in the world his love for all the peoples of the world. It all goes back to this verse where he switches his hand and he gives the younger the blessing who becomes synonymous with the people of the world. God's faithfulness. What did I call that chiasm? It says... Um, I give him a name. One of, but me, she forgot, says the Lord. A chiasm of contrasts. Our unfaithfulness in God's unlimited mercy. I found that in 23 November of 2007. But that is the way that God works in the Bible, is to give us object lessons in the stream of human time. This guy really did bless those children, just the way the Bible said. It's not a fairy tale. God knew that he would do that, and by doing that, he used that as an example of the people of Israel all the way up until the time of Hosea, and then he says, guess what I'm going to be doing? And he gives us clues in his word. Nobody could have figured this out. Nobody would ever have known this until Paul writes these words and applies them to the Gentiles. It's impossible. Nobody ever would have known that these object lessons in these people actually served a purpose. And we're that purpose. We're sitting here right now redeemed by the Lord, hidden thousands of years ago. Unbelievable. Isn't that unbelievable? It's just the most... And i got to tell you what, if you just... I've said this to you before, if you weren't in a class, if you just are bored sometime, and I don't mean bored, bored. I mean if you just need something to do, and you want to find a chiasm because they are everywhere in the Bible. People find them all the time. People are always emailing them with me. Find, guess what? You want to hear something funny. Talking about, you're gonna laugh. I don't have it in here. I've got it on my. Uh, I, I've got it in my uh, computer. This guy sent me an, a chiasm from Daniel chapter nine, twenty four through twenty seven. The ones that I'm always citing, and I completely missed it. Okay, now listen. This is so funny. This guy is a praetorist. Oh. And yeah, he says, look at, look at the chiasm I found and look at what it shows. And I said, you have misunderstood this chiasm completely. It's like this one. It's a chiasm of contrasts. He had completely missed it, applying it to praetorism when it is as clear as crystal that it is pointing to the Antichrist and the Christ. Back and forth, it's a chiasm of contrast. And I said, this clearly proves that 
the rapture is going to occur and that God's attention is going to be back on Israel. And he blew up at me. 